God give us Christian homes. One to go. Homes where the Bible is loved and taught. Homes where the master's will is sought. Homes crowned with beauty your love has wrought. God give us Christian homes. God give us Christian homes. God give us Christian homes. Homes where the Father is true and strong homes that are free from the blight of wrong homes that are joyous with love and song god give us christian homes God give us Christian homes. God give us Christian homes. Homes where the children are led to know Christ in his beauty who loves them so. Homes where the altar fires burn glow. God give us Christian homes. God give us Christian home. I have found a friend in Jesus. I have found a friend in Jesus. He's everything to me. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. To my soul. Is the lily of the valley in him alone I see all my needs to cleanse and make me fully whole. In sorrow is my comfort. In trouble is my stay, he tells me, and we care on him to roll. He is the lily of the valley, the bright among the stars. Is the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. He will never, never leave me, nor yet forsake me. Why I live by faith. And do his blessed will, blessed will. A wall of fire about me, I have nothing now to fear. From his manna, he my hungry soul shall
see is blessed first where the rivers of the light shall ever roll is the lily of the valley the bright Fairest of ten thousand to my soul. In sorrow is my comfort, in trouble is my stay. He tells me every care on me. Is the lily of the valley the bright and morning star? Is the fairest of ten thousand to my soul? Amen. I can be seated. Uh, we thank God for what he is doing in holiness survival movement. The Lord gives us the assignments you receive from here. The prayer assignment, the listening assignment, and the study assignment. We have seen that so many of you don't have Bibles with commentary. Either because you were not used to it, you didn't even see the value. But we have seen the value. It is a Bible school for those who don't go to Bible school. And you must not go to Bible school. It's not everybody that goes there. But yet, you can be well trained. At whom? Through books, tapes, and the Holy Spirit. So, we, because of this marriage conference, we labored to get this Bible commentary available. We wanted to get the fire Bible, but the fire Bible is out of stock in Nigeria. As I was told, the Bible Society said, if we want them to produce the fire Bible for us, they will do. But the minimum they can produce is 6,000 copies at 6,000 Naira, which is 36 million. Then, if we cannot buy them all, we make them available for the world market to recover our money. And that we should give a deposit of 18 million. And we don't have the money now. So we can't boast about that. You can see that the Bible is being attacked by the devil. He wants to wipe it out in a technical way. Such that even those producing the Bible are weakened by the devil from various factors. The life in the spirit Bible is the same thing with the fire Bible. Have you noticed like that? Have you noticed it so? The commentary is from the same author. You might see any slight change of sentence, but it's the same, same arrangement, same everything with the fire Bible. Now, we try to make the life in the spirit Bible available. The copies available in Abuja were 13 copies. 
and we brought them up. And they sent to look for it in Lagos. The copies remaining in Lagos were 43 copies. We bought, is it 40 copies or so? We bought them up to make them available for you. If you are wise, get your copy. Otherwise, these things, it's as if the enemy is facing them out. Either because people are not interested in Christianity and so they're not buying them. And the producers are not, are not seeing progress. Or which other way, we don't know. But we have them now. And if you have the 36 million to help us print the Bible, praise God. That would be wonderful work in this end time for Jesus. Amen? So, do that. Make sure you, you do your assignments. Some of these prayers I'm leading here is to promote your assignment. Amen? Yeah. To ensure that you make at least one hour prayer yeah. per day. So, make sure you maintain it. Very vital. Otherwise, the devil wants to face even prayer out. So that congregations, now when they meet together, is to sing and dance and repeat prayers. My father, my father, my father, my father. <laughs> Pray original prayer. Because the devil wants to face out the, the bubbles of prayer that come from the heart. He wants to face it out. Don't allow that. If you look at this program, it is designed to start today. However, we will stop on Friday. Don't clap hands here. So, because of the transport arrangements that some of you have already made, so we will see how the Lord will run the program so that we finish on Friday. Amen? Let's rise up upon our feet. Commit yourself to the Lord. Tell the Lord to minister to you. Jesus name we pray thank you heavenly father because you're here we are happy because you love us you want to be where we are <laughs> thank you lord in Jesus name may your word wash your children clean and draw us right close to yourself in Jesus name thank you father speak to your children your married children let them understand what you want them to know about their marriage union and family life in Jesus name we pray we are taking the message seeking help 
and counsel for your marriage and family progress. Seeking help and counsel for your marriage and family progress. In the book of James, chapter 4, James, chapter 4, we want to read verse 6 to verse 8. But he giveth grace. He giveth more grace. Wherefore, he said, God resisted the proud but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Purify your hearts, ye double-minded. I'm speaking here on humility. That it will take the humble person to look for more. It will take the humble person to look for light. To ask for the truth. To seek help. It will take humble people. Proud people will not do it. When you are humble as a husband, you will want to seek help from people, even from God. It requires humility. But when you are proud, who is greater than you? Who knows more than you? That pastor, what does he know? Is he even married? When did he marry? That I'll be going to him to be saying, eh, I want you to help me. I want you to, in fact, there's something I want to know. I just want to know how God will do it. When did he become a Christian? It will take a humble man. It will take a humble woman to ask help. Ask help. It will take a humble woman. The Bible says God gives grace. More grace to the humble. But to the proud, God resists him. God will push him far away. Because ye say ye have none. Therefore, your sin remains. Because ye say you have no need of anything. You have known it. Therefore, your problem remains. Your family embarrassment remains. Your family disgrace remains. You have your pride. You have the disgrace. Pride actually go it before a fall and an haughty spirit before destruction because how will you who is there in this world but even Jesus went to John for to demand him to baptize him look at it in Luke Chapter 3. Jesus went to John the Baptist and said, Baptize me. Although John will feel, ah, ah, Who am I? Who am I? That you are coming to me. 
to say, I should baptize you. Jesus said, allow it to be so. Look at it in Matthew rather, chapter 3. Allow it to be so. For so it becomes righteousness. Matthew chapter 3 verse 13 to verse 15. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee. Comest thou to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now. For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. It is required of you to take counsel. The goat of life for our humility put solution some solutions of our problem in the hands of somebody somewhere that when we will humble and go to that person we will find the solution he is the one giving you the solution. But he put it somewhere. God, I want to do this. God, tell me what to do. God, show me your will. He has put it in somebody. Go to, when you go for counsel, I shall give it to you. When you go to look for advice, when I see that humility in you, I will reward it. For he giveth grace to the humble. Jesus, all this while, was living without baptism. The coming of the Holy Spirit in him, let's use that word, pro pro prominently. The voice to authenticate him audibly had not been heard. But the Trinity had not been revealed, showing that he was the Son of God before everybody until he humbled and look at what happened after the baptism verse 16 and Jesus when he was baptized went up straightway out of the water and lo the heavens were opened unto him and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and lighted upon him and lo a voice from heaven saying this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. The ministry of a man on earth was required to magnify Jesus. What if he said, how can I go to man? Then God will not show him this. Then these things will not happen. So what am I saying? There are so problems in your family. Problems with, with your wife. You have been contending in it for long. You have used all wisdom. It's not working. You have prayed and fasted. Remaining counseling. Remaining going to a man of God. How do I treat this? Going to someone the Lord will direct you. How do I handle this? Then the Lord shall meet with you there. It is expected. That your marriage, marriage union should make progress in love. And that the family should prosper and be established in peace and righteousness. Challenges in the marriage are sure to come. Such as sickness, barrenness, conflict, interferences. Of the eyes outsiders, poverty, demon, demonic attacks, and others. This will come because you are in this world. Every house that is built in this world has, has to be tested, tried. The rain descended, the storms blew. And the flood came and hit at that house. It is the house that follows the counsel of God that does not fall. Without counsel, purposes are disappointed. 
Where no counsel is, the people fall. But with much counsel, there is establishment, there is safety. Your marriage will be tried. As I'm saying now, there are some trials you are passing through already. You have used your method. That's why sometimes when you try, try, it doesn't work, you go into anger. You're frustrated. Your anger came because you're frustrated. Or else, you're not, you, don't, you go out and don't come home early. So that, no, please, I don't want trouble. Why? You have not gone to, to look for counsel. You have not gone for help. Sometimes, the family members say, ah, no, he, he don't go to any, I mean, the husband may tell the wife, don't carry my matter to anybody. If I hear, if Satan tells you that, will you obey him? If Satan comes to you and say, if you carry any matter in this house to the church, to any man of God, and say you want counsel, I will kill you. You will fear Satan. Then why are you fearing your husband? Who is speaking what he does not know? Who is speaking contrary to the word of God? Or your wife said, the day I see anybody come to this house, is then you will know that I cannot be here. I, you, I, I will go wild. Then you know that you, will, you should expect nothing from me anymore. And you're listening to that woman. The God that says, take counsel, will handle that woman for you. The power will follow obedience. Power. You're dealing with power. And the word of God is power. Following it is generating power. That power is overcoming power. Don't fear anyone threatening you and you're dying. It's better you should go there than you die and go to hell. You can't make righteousness there. Then why are you afraid? Why are you afraid? It's better the marriage should, should, he should say he doesn't want the marriage again because we're looking for solution. I mean righteous solution according to the word of God. Why? All effort has been done. All patience have been exercised, but it's not working. There is something the Lord put somewhere. Counseling. Counseling. Through prayer and counsel, your marriage will triumph in Christ. Your family will be established in peace and righteousness. Therefore, number one, seek help from God through constant prayer. Not only man, the main person to start with is God. The main person that can give without directing to man, if possible, is God. The main person that can keep your privacy is God. The one that knows the matter in detail is God. The one that is thinking well of you is God. The one that revealed that man to you, that woman to you in marriage is God. The one you even rebelled against to go and marry that man is God. The one you rebelled against to go and marry that woman is God. So, he knows everything. He knows. So, he's the person you should go to. Thank God God is not a man. I was, I was reasoning at it that David was moved by the power of lust when he saw the nakedness of Bathsheba and got the woman to his house and slept with the woman and forgot it after one month, the woman came and said, that thing we did, child has come inside. Ah, what will I tell the world? Me who have professed righteousness this way, and the devil just troubled me one day. Hey, what will I tell the world? The devil came, used wisdom, not the wisdom of God. He didn't go to God for counsel. What's your wisdom? So, David, go and kill 
Uriah, who is already out of the family for more than one month now, is in the war front. Go on, send the job. She'll send him to where they will kill him. By the way, Job will not understand why. People will not understand why. It's, your hand is not upon him. He died by himself in the war. God will not understand too. The wife of Uriah will not understand too. The, the man that you sent to go and call that woman for you. He didn't study the matter. There's nothing here that shall not be revealed. So, David, so he did and killed that man. But the woman will still give birth to a child. What would they say? The thought didn't come to him that the child, he should also kill the child. Maybe he didn't know how to do it. It's getting too much for him. Maybe he was convicted when he did that. The first thing, the first killing. He now said, woman, come and marry. Oh, your husband has died. Everybody will know that it's because your husband died. So come and marry me. Marriage continued. But see this dirty life, dirty thing. And see the forgiveness of God. Although God judged him. But can you see the forgiveness of God? That God forgave David. The sin he committed in adultery and murder and lying and wickedness. God forgave him. How did God show David and mankind and all that may come to know the story that he had forgiven David? He gave a son to Bathsheba a one a well beloved son called Solomon and said it is Solomon that I love that shall take over your kingship then this minister so deeply into David God indeed has forgiven me say is that the manner of man oh God, can man do this thing you are, you are doing with all my evil life you forgive. Thou forgivest mine iniquity. Blessed is the man whose sin is forgiven. Who, I mean, whose iniquity is forgiven and whose sin is covered by the Lord himself. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute iniquity. This is the Lord that I say, however terrible it went in that marriage, however terrible your sin life is, Go to him for counseling and seek help from the Lord. Go to him. Is it not against him you sinned? Go back to him. He has submitted. He will restore. It's against him you did that. But he will restore. He will forgive. He will restore. He will make a way for you that others will see glory in your life. That's why you should go to him. In Psalm 27, verse 4 to verse 8. Psalm 27, verse 4 to verse 8. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock and now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy I will sing yeah I will sing praises unto the Lord hear O oh Lord when I cry with my voice have mercy up also upon me and answer me when thou sayest seek ye my face my heart saith unto thee thy face Lord will I seek that is the voice of the psalmist this David I'm talking of this David I'm talking of seek the Lord for your marriage for the problems of your marriage. 
Seek the Lord for the confusion and oppression your wife is giving you. For the challenges, fighting, nagging, beating that your husband is giving you. For the rejection of your husband, turn your face to the Lord. Seek him. David said, one thing of I desire, I want to be before the Lord. I want to look unto the Lord. I want to call upon the Lord. I want to trust upon the Lord. I want to seek help from the Lord. For in time of trouble, he will hide me with his hands. He will hide me. He will protect me. In the secret of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock that I collapse not. That I sink not. And because of the Lord, my head shall not bow in shame. And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. I will not bow in shame. Because of the Lord, you will not bow in shame. You will not bow in shame. Whatever is the challenge at home, whatever is the battle in the family, whatever is the battle in the marriage union, when you're going on the street, you will not bow in shame before your neighbors. You will not bow in shame before your relations. You will not bow in shame before your workers in the office. You will not bow in shame. The Lord shall be your helper. That is it. Yes. And you will offer the sacrifice of joy. Your heart shall know joy and peace. God will be there ready for you to cry. And the Lord himself saying, seek my face. So God is saying, for that challenge, seek my face. God is saying, for that mountain, marital mountain, seek my face. For that great sea blocking your marital progress, seek my face. Let your heart answer him, thy face, O Lord, will I seek. Can you say it? Say it again. Seek my face, said the Lord. Answer. Thank you. Thank you. That's what God wants you to do. And that's the solution. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11 to verse 14. Jeremiah 29, verse 11 to verse 14. For I know the thoughts. That I think toward you, see the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, see the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity. Say amen to that. The Lord is inviting you. Seek my face. I know the thoughts I think toward you. I know the plan I have. I've been following the plan. I want to continue with the plan. I want to walk out the plan in your life. Seek my face. God is saying... Set a time to seek his face. Seek God's face. Come before Jesus. Seek his face. Seek his face. The Lord has a plan for you in your marital union. He has a plan for your children. He has a plan for your family. He knows your thoughts. He knows your desires. 
He knows your difficulties. He knows your challenges, your pains. He knows your fear. He knows you are foreseeing shame. You are foreseeing shame. He knows. Seek my face. I will turn away your captivity. Seek me with the whole heart. I will appear. I will appear to you. I will appear in your circumstance. You will find me. You will see me walking. I will be changing things. Seek my face. That's the call of God upon your life. The call of God. He said he will interfere. He said he will reconstruct your union. He said he will build up your marriage. He said he will restore joy to you. He says he will give you glory in your marriage. He said he will give you protection in your situation. He will make your oil's husband to honor you. I'm telling you, seek my face. God said to the son of man, son of man, can these dry bones live? Thou knowest, O oh Lord. Okay, prophesy to the dry bones. And say to the dry bones, you will live. I'm going to blow upon you. I'm going to bring flesh upon your life. I'm going to bring veins upon your life. I'll cause blood to enter into you. And you will live. Amen. Your marriage will live. Amen. I say your marriage will live. Amen. Simple. Seek his first. Seek his face. Seek him when you are struck with fear for internal or external cause. Seek him for his salvation. Seek him. In the book of Ezra, chapter 8, verse 21 to 23. Ezra, chapter 8, verse 21 to 23. The Bible tells us here, then I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Ahava that we might afflict ourselves before our God to seek of him a right way for us and for our little ones and for all our substance. For I was ashamed to require of the king a band of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy in the way because we have spoken unto the king saying the hand of our God is upon all them for good that seek him but his power and his wrath is against all them that forsake him so we fasted and besought our God for this and he was entreated of us see the circumstance of Israel here and see your circumstance they resemble Ezra had been permitted by the king to go up to Jerusalem for the rebuilding of the temple. Ezra gathered other people along with him to go and rebuild Jerusalem. What happened? There was the danger of enemy attacks on the way. The journey would take them how many days? Either one month journey of traveling from, the, from that place all to Jerusalem. A long journey indeed. And the danger of enemy attacks. Because there, there are troops that are just going from place to place seeking which people to attack and dispossess them of their property. Now, these people I'm going with are not going to be carrying weapons. They're not going to be carrying, they are not even trained in war. How can we reach Jerusalem safely? I really need assistance. I need soldiers to accompany us on the way so that 
when people see soldiers following us, they'll become afraid. They won't attack us. But I have already told the king the greatness of our God, the goodness of our God, that the Lord is with those that fear him. The Lord defends them. The Lord takes care of them. He covers them with a cloud, a pillar of cloud, a, a pillar of fire. How will I now go back to the king again and say we are afraid we'll be, we'll be attacked? We will be abusing this gospel of God. Now, I said, my people, let's go to God. He's able to see us through. He is able to defend his name. We will not bring shame to his name. So, we declared a fast to afflict ourselves. Fasting is afflicting yourself. When you feel hungry, you're not eating. Your body is in pain. You want to drink water. Your body is in pain. Ah. Let God see that even your body is crying. Help. So, let's afflict ourselves in our fasting to go before the Lord and seek help that God send your angels. They're greater and better than physical human armies to take us safely to Jerusalem. And they prayed. God answered their prayers. Amen. Amen. In your case, you have shown people that you are a Christian. Both, that, both you and your wife, you are, a, you are Christians. In fact, you have preached it, shown them, make, made noise that you are members of holiness revival movement. That is holiness. That you, you fear God in holiness. You are not as other churches are who don't know the Lord and commit sin. No, 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 no. That's not what you do. But with all this thing you've said, challenge has risen up in your marriage and your wife said, I'm packing. Ah. Uh, your wife said, I am packing out of this house. I cannot be here. I cannot be here. Woman, if you pack out of this place, what will I tell these neighbors? If you pack out of my house, that with all my Christianity I have felt, with all this noise that I have made to people, people coming to me for counseling, and I walk, in fact, I tell them I will fast for you, you mean you want to tell all these people who have been playing hypocrisy here? But the woman is not hearing say, well, that's your own. Me, I can't stay in this, your house. Me, I'm going. Me, I'm going. This way cannot meet me here. I say, I've told you. And as you see in the theater, the face back has been parked and, 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 and already kept somewhere. Hey, me, shame is coming. Go to the Lord. Carry the matter to God. Tell God the shame that is coming over you. Tell God it's for his name. It is for his name. For why should this woman bring disgrace to the name of the Lord? Why should the devil come in to provoke the Lord to anger? Will God spare her? How will it be when you are left alone? Carry the matter to God in prayer. Plead! Or it could be a child that is stubborn, rude, in that way, please seek the Lord. You will find God. Talk to him in fasting and prayer. Seek the Lord for his intervention. The Lord said, when you seek for me, you shall find me. Or else your husband is the one doing this thing. Ah! You have shown your father's house that you are well married I and my husband, we belong to holiness revival movement. My husband is a man of God. And uh, by the grace of God, we're telling you people to repent. We're telling you people to come to church. In fact, we're inviting you to holiness revival movement. And this man, what came upon him? That this man now is going after other women. I've had the story very clear. What a shame. Where will I carry this shame to? Whom will I talk to about this shame? That what happened to me that my husband is still putting eye on another woman? What happened to me? Did I refuse him? Did I deny him for shame, for embarrassment, for disgrace? Go to the Lord. 
the Lord will cover your shame. The Lord will intervene for your sake. Go to the Lord. That's what I am saying. Seek the Lord. Seek his face. Seek the Lord. Seek his strength. Seek the Lord. Seek his favor. Seek his companionment. Seek his presence. He will find you will find him. Yes. You will find him. Seek him in prayer for every situation in your life. For every situation in your marriage. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall open. Everyone that seeketh findeth. To him that knocketh, it shall be opened. What man of you is there? What man is there of you that if his son shall ask bread, will he give him a stone? If he shall ask for fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more? Will your heaven father come to cover your shame? Come to deliver you from shame? Come to protect you from embarrassment? How much more will your heavenly father give good things to them that love him? To them that ask him? Yes. That's what the Lord is saying. Be, be worried for nothing. You have been seeking, sitting in worries. In fear. Because something will explode. Because some shame will come. Be worried for nothing. Be worried for nothing. Mean, tell this woman, be worried for nothing. Say it. Say it again. Say it the third time. Women, tell this man, be worried for nothing. Say it again. Say the tetra. For but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God that passeth all understanding shall keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Don't worry. Don't worry, that shame will not come. Don't worry, that embarrassment will not come. That ring that is threatening to fall, it shall not fall. God is a praising help in trouble. A praising help closer to you than the trouble. He shall stay the adversary. He shall turn the adversary. You will see the backside of your enemy. Jesus' name. Now, I've said, seek the Lord. Number two, seek knowledge, understanding, and wisdom of his world. Seek knowledge, understanding, and wisdom of his world. In Joshua chapter 1, I read verse 8. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 this book this book can you raise it up this book the bible can you raise it up exactly exactly that this book will overcome every situation in your marriage This book shall not depart. Book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. And then thou shalt have good success in your family. That scripture, the Bible will give you victory. Always be there. Always read it. Always submit yourself to it. 
Let your joy and comfort in marriage come from the knowledge of God's word and the practice of it. Let your life in marriage, in the family, in family life, be sweetened, but be sweetened by the understanding of God's word. How sweet are your ways unto me? In that house, let the word be sweet unto you. Let the practice of the word be sweet unto you. And let this overflow to your marriage partner and to the entire family. Your joy, your gladness, your musics of joy and melodies in your heart. Let it permeate that family. Seeing you always in peace. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Our brother, the senator. Emmanuel Boacha told me something day before yesterday. I think it's day before yesterday. He said he was in Jalingo and his political people came to meet him in the house. They filled his house. A man also came in there and the man sat quiet and allowed him to finish with everybody and was watching him. And when he finished with everybody, the man came and said, Sir, why are you so peaceful? Politicians are scattered everywhere now. Their face is tough. But you are peaceful. You are peaceful. Is that so? How will he not be peaceful? Who has found the God that gives the throne without struggle? Amen? What battle do you need to... In fact, the Lord told him, just, is it two days ago or so, three days or so, the Lord told him, be preparing thanksgiving for me that you have won. Be preparing a great crusade. Some people, they ask me, say... Now waiting to make you glad. I just they tell them say, Now nah, Jesus they make me glad. Are they glad? Are they glad? Are they glad? Are they glad? 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 <laughs> Worship the Lord. Give a clap offering to Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 That is how it should be. A wife in the house. The word of God has taken you over. And the word has kept you peaceful. Great peace have them that have they that love thy law, nothing shall offend them. Look at it in the book of Psalm 119, verse 97 to 108. Psalm 119, verse 97 to verse 108. The Bible tells us here, saying, Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Thou, through thy commandments, hast made me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. <laughs> when my husband wants to cause trouble, I know. When he speaks, I know how to overcome that, those words. Simple. Make me wiser. When my wife is ready, when smoke starts coming out of her and she's grinding her teeth, grrr, I know trouble is coming. And I know immediately what to do. That's it. Thou, O oh Lord, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Thou, through thy commandments, hast made me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers. For thy testimonies are my meditation. 
Yes. I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. Can you see what the word does? It cleanses your life. From every evil way, it cleanses your life. I have not departed from thy judgment, for thou hast taught me how to honor my husband, how to serve my husband. He does not even, before he speaks, I have done it. He, he will just be wondering, ah, how is this man knowing what I want to say? In fact, before I even talk, it's done. I, God is through the world. It's through the world. Your wife is wondering. Ah, ah, all her mistakes, you have not spoken. You have not done anything. You, have not, you would have been crying. You would have been shouting. The, the lion would have roared. But you're quiet. What happened? The scripture told me that I should know that you are a human being. I should not continue to chide. For God doesn't do so. He said, I should be able to bear things. For love beareth all things. So that's through the world. How sweet I thy ways unto my taste. Yeah, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. I hate every false way. No. Thy word is a lamb unto my feet and a light unto my path, showing me what to do, what to say, how to do it. Every, I'm shown what to do, how to live because of thy word in my life. I have sworn and I will perform it that I will keep thy righteous judgments. Whatever is the problem in the marriage, whether my, my, my wife gives me her body or not, that I have promised God, I will, I will keep his word in the face of any trouble. Whether my husband recognizes me that I am a woman beside him or not, I have promised God. I've shown. <clears throat> I've promised God I will keep myself without any trouble. I won't for me any trouble. Whatever is the situation. Where in prosperity too, I will never be proud. I won't speak foolishly in the, before people. No. Whatever it is, I've already told myself. That's the promise I have made. Yes. That's what the word of God is saying. This is my prayer, promise. This is my promise. Make a promise. Let this word, the sweetness of this word, cover you in that family. Let it be more than money. Something more than gold. Something more than silver. The word of God. God in the heart of man. The word of God in the heart of a woman is something more than husband. Something more than children. Something more than money. It keeps me joyful. I smile. The word makes me glad. The spirit of God in the life of a woman is something more than treasures of life. It's more than that. It's more than seven children. It's more than that. So, you are given to the world. So, put yourself in the world. Be from one world to another. From one world to another. How many of you have finished the Bible already? You have finished the Bible. You have finished it. Wonderful. You are even going through it for the second time. This is marvelous. That's your business in this earth. As long as your life is there, you're peaceful. And see what the Lord tells us. When you do that, when you do that, the Bible says in Psalm 119 verse 165, Psalm 119 verse 165, Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Great peace, great peace, great joy, great satisfaction. Have that 
have those women that love thy law in their father, in their husband's house. Have the men that love the, the, the word of God in their marital home. Great peace. Nothing shall offend them. That's why the woman does like, maybe even purposely, does like this, does like that. The man is not moved. He said, hey, what is happening to you? You, they will abuse you. You are not doing anything. They are doing like they are not doing peace of the world. Let the world overcome you. Seek the world. I said, seek the Lord. Then seek his world. That's what the Lord is saying. Use the word of God to purify, correct, and perfect your marriage partner and family members, children and those that are with you. Always use from the world. They can't resist it. When they gathered around Philip, they didn't resist the words that come out of Philip's mouth. It was scripture. The words that will come out of your mouth before your husband is scripture. He, he cannot resist it. Even if he shouts now, when he goes to sit down, it, it will pierce through him. The scriptures will come back to him. And that is how he will, be, he will repent. Because what you are saying is not coming from yourself, it's coming from the creator God. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. All scripture. Use it to reprove. Use it to correct. Use it on your wife. Quote the scriptures. Quote the scripture. He will not say you have said a bad language. You are not the one saying it. It's, that's what God said. And they are not quoted to, because, to slap her, to beat her. No, to perfect her. In love, saying the truth in love, in humility, to correct him, to show how wrong he is by saying what he's saying. That see what the scripture says here. See what the scripture says here. That will overcome the devil. Jesus and Satan. The devil came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, cast yourself down from this high mountain. And Jesus used the scripture. It is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord your God. Because when Satan said it, he quoted the scripture. He said, It is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee. They shall bear thee with thy, their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus said, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Use the scriptures. And he came up and said, Bow down before me. All the glories of the world are my, is mine or are mine. I will give them to you. Bow down before me. Jesus said, Get away from me, Satan. It is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and only him shall thou serve. And the devil left him. Say, The devil left him. The devil will leave your husband. I say, The devil will leave you. Why? As you begin to play on scriptures. Praise the Lord. And again, the Bible says, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it. With the washing of water. By what? By the word. The word sanctifies. The word cleanses. Use the word on your wife, on your children, on your husband. Give them scriptures. It will cleanse them. It will perfect them. Show them what the scripture says. Tell her by the scripture. As you are speaking those things in scriptures, they will purify her. They will purify him. They, it will sanctify and bring forth the beauty of the inner heart that has been covered by some cloud. The scriptures will clean off, will roll off that cloud from the heart and make the beauty of the heart to appear. In Jesus' name. Therefore, seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. Let 
your marriage partner and family members enjoy you because of the word of God. Because of the word of God. Make it so. Let them have more confidence in you and God than you and your nature. Because your nature may change with conditions, but because of God, you will not change. Genesis chapter 50. Genesis chapter 50, verse 15 to 22. Genesis 50, verse 15 to 22. And when Joseph's brethren saw that their fathers was dead, they said, Joseph will peradventure hate us and will certainly require us all the evil which we did unto him. And they sent a messenger unto Joseph, saying, Thy father did command before he died, saying, So shall ye say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee. Now, the trespass of thy brethren and, the, and their sin, for they did unto thee evil. And now we pray thee, forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him. And his brethren also went and fell down before his face. And they said, Behold, we be thy servants. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day, to save much people alive. Now therefore fear ye not, I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. He comforted them. Why did they come? They came and said, we are the servants of the God of your father. They came because of that God, for Joseph fears God. We did great evil. Now opportunity is in your hand to wipe us out, if you want, because we did evil against you. No, don't fear. I'll treat you fine. Am I in the place of God? No. Don't fear. I will take care of your lives. I'll take care of your wives for God's sake, for I fear God. Let them have confidence. Let your husband have confidence because of your fear of God. Your wife should have confidence although she has wronged, she has spoken wrongly, she has taken wrong action, but for God's sake, you won't go beyond the boundary. She will have confidence to apologize. She will have confidence to come again into your presence for God's sake. Make sure your marriage and family do not hinder you from going to heaven. Make sure. Though they may not work well, though your marriage might be full of troubles, though your family, your children may behave in their kind, heaven you won't miss it. Second Samuel chapter 23. Second Samuel. If you have other versions, they will not read the way I'm giving you now. Second Samuel chapter 23, verse 5. David said, Although my house be not so with God, yet he had made with me an everlasting covenant. Oh, that in all things and sure. For this is all my salvation and my desire, although he make it not to grow. Although my children committed incest, Absalom killed his brother. Absalom wanted to forcefully take away the throne. Adonijah, without my instruction, this is disorderliness. Yet I found favor with God. My heaven is sure. My heaven is sure. My heaven is sure. All these things we're telling you so that your heaven should be sure. Whatever is the situation of the family, whatever is the, 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 fam, the, the situation of the marriage, the unfortunate events of a situation surrounding you, 
Make sure your favor with God should not fail. Finally, seek counsel from true men. Seek counsel from true men. It is not the will of God that you perish in your family due to overwhelming situation. God has given wisdom to men to help deliver one another. Therefore, do not conceal your challenges. Seek counsel. In the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 16, verse 23. 2 Samuel, chapter 16, verse 23. And his counsel of Ahithophel, which he counseled in those days, was as if a man had inquired at the oracle of God. So, was all the counsel of Ahithophel, both with David and with Absalom. It is just as if you go to God in a physical sense. That's how the counsel of Ahithophel is. What he tells you, that is it. There are people God raised up and given this wisdom and gifts to them. They will do what God will do. For God has asked them to walk representatively for him. That's why he said, go for counsel. Don't hide. He that hided his family matter shall not prosper. He that hided his family sins shall not prosper. He that hided his family difficulties and disaster shall not prosper. But he that would seek counsel not that every little matter you run for counsel, you have tried. You are mature. You try here, you try here. If you have headache, you first go and buy paracetamol. If you have malaria, you go and buy this and buy this. But when the things are not working, you say, ah, let's go to you, the doctor. That's what we mean. What if you say, no, I'm not going to the doctor? No. And the thing is not going also in your life. You're building doom for yourself. That's what we're saying. You're building doom. When your, the battle between you and your wife has been lasting now 10 years, you're waiting for hell. Which was righteous in that family? Pride has kept it from being revealed and pride leads to destruction. That's what we're saying. Seek counsel. In those days, the counsel of Ahithophel was as if a man went to God directly. As Ahithophel would tell you, so the matter is. Then why don't you enjoy this type of Ahithophel? That the Lord raises up, that gives clear mind of God. What business do we do? How do we use the money? How do we do this? We have this children issue. We have not given birth to children. We have, oh, how do we handle this? How, how, why don't you enjoy these kinds of a heat of hell that the Lord has raised up? Why don't you? Why don't you? In 2 Samuel chapter 20, verse 18. 2 Samuel. Chapter 20, verse 18. Then she spake, saying, They were wont to speak in old times, saying, They shall surely ask counsel at Abel. And so they ended the matter. Among the Israelites, there was a city called Abel. God put wisdom in some men and women there. Because she, speaking this, says in verse 19, I am one of them that are peaceable and faithful in Israel. I am a woman, but among those who give counsels of wisdom in Abel. So, if a matter happens anywhere, and the people are in argument, not let's be like this, no, 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 it is like this. Let it, okay, why bothering ourselves? We shall go to Abel. Then everybody will keep quiet. When we go to Abel, men of wisdom shall tell us the answer. Then everybody keeps quiet. No argument again. Argument that is developing to, to fighting, developing to marital split. It's no more there. When you recognize first and counsel that we shall go for counseling, 
let's know what will be said. Whether it is this thing I have said or that, that we're killing ourselves. No, 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 no. We shall take counsel at Abel. That's what God is telling us. Make sure you enjoy all these provisions. There are professionals, consultants, and seasoned marriage counselors whom God has prepared to bring solution to your marital challenges. We have consultants, doctors. We have professionals in various ways. And we have anointed men of God. So you have, is it business? They are business consultants. Is it sickness? Is it childbearing? Is it family planning? They are consultants seasoned people that you can take counsel. How do you do it? How do we do our own? How do we want children like this? We want like this. How do we do it? They are consultants. Professionals. When your vehicle spoils, do you make effort to repair it yourself? Don't you take it to professionals? Mechanics? Professional mechanics? To go and fix up your vehicle? Why are you not fixing up your marital life when some areas go bad and it's affecting movement? Why don't you go to consultants to get it fixed up and you're busy pre protecting yourself? Let nobody know our shame. What is shame? Shame is that which stands at the last when you have finally failed. But if you get the matter settled, shame disappears. That's what we're saying. So, take counsel. Finally, in the book of Exodus, chapter 18, verse 19. Exodus 18, verse 19. The Bible tells us here, saying, Hearken now unto my voice, I will give thee counsel. And God shall be with thee. Can you see that? Who was speaking? Moses' father-in-law. Talking to who? Moses, the man of God. In fact, let us say, the greatest man of God of, of, of that generation. But he said, I will give, him, I will give you counsel. Hacking here. Yeah, don't be proud. To make this work easier. Many of you, including church leaders, take decisions without counseling. You travel anyhow. Where is this brother? He has traveled outside the country. As close as we are. He didn't think to say, sir, this is what is coming up on me. I, I'm thinking like this. I just felt I need your prayers. I need your work. Where is this brother? He has done this. Is what has happened? Where is this sister? Uh, this, uh, he has married. Eh? Married? How, which married? Which, who married her? Is one of the Catholic Pentecostal. <laughs> Catholic Pentecostal. Where are they? She never sought counsel. No counsel. Without counsel, purposes are disappointed. You suffer sorrows and miseries. You lose your soul from heaven because of pride and carelessness that does not look for counseling. You will, you will humble today. Please, husband and wife, please advise yourselves not to cover matters that will kill you. I'm not saying make your family naked. Don't cover issues that are killing you. There are solutions to life's problem. To your surprise, that thing which you think cannot be done can be done. That problem you think that cannot be solved can be solved because the God you serve is the God of impossibility. But he distributes it in gifts among men. Ask him, he will direct you to the right person and you will smile. Let's rise up upon our feet and thank the Lord. And say, God, our marriage has changed. All this sorrow, all this delay, all this, we will, they are not, it will, you will seek counsel, we'll get it off. I'm going to seek the face of the Lord for this matter. Seek the face of God for this matter. Ask him. Ask him. Seek his face. Seek the face of the Lord. 
for your marriage, for your marriage partner. Discuss with somebody, how do I treat this woman? I've tried all my wisdom, it's not working. I'm getting tired already. Discuss with somebody, how do I treat this man? How do I treat this man? Thank you, Jesus. for advice you will find that that mountain shall easily be passed over by you for you have come before the God of impossibility with him all things are possible in your business in even sexual matters that you're finding sexual difficulties why not take counsel there's solution there's solution there's solution why frustrating yourselves there's solution consultants have answers people chosen by god are heat of hell has the answer what you should do and the matter will be over Jesus name we pray you know you have been praying long that's why God said I should bring this answer to you I never knew that he loves me this way I never knew that he loves me this way I never knew that he loves me this way he loves me this way. I say thank you, Lord, my God. He loves you. Jesus loves you. I never knew that you love me this way, my Lord. Jesus loves you. I never knew that you care for me this way, my Lord. He cares for you. I 
never know that you care for me this way, my God. Thank you, Jesus. I never know that you love me this way, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Now, go and thank the Lord. Go and thank the Lord. He loves you, actually. He loves you. That's why he told you this. He cares for you. He cares for you. The Lord cares for you. Casting all your care upon the Lord, for He loves you. He cares for you. Thank you, Jesus. You care for us. You want us to have the best. Worship. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Amen. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805 you can also reach us through our email address, holinessrevivalmovement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe
Jesus, I believe. 